let's get back to this Donald Trump story. A man that we speak to religiously on this show and always will. He's fantastic. Michael Graham, US political commentator and managing editor of Inside Sources. A very good afternoon to you, sir. How are you, my friend? I speak to you religiously too, Jeremy. On my knees, gnashing and weeping in prayer. So uh, you should, how, you should be, because if you're not. So here's my question for you: oh. Do you know anyone yes. who should rush out and buy a lottery ticket faster than Donald Trump? Um, because <sighs> that event on Saturday was astonishing, and I was watching it, and you just, and particularly the photo that really got me was the one that showed. You can see the waves from the bullet behind it. You know yep. what I mean? It's yep. That's really because that you can't deny. Holy crap! That's how close. That is a bullet. A, You're I, right. That's a bullet. Yeah, and it's close, and it's right there, and it's you know. And then the second thing today, the news came that probably the most serious case against Trump in court of the four main cases, the one involving the uh, the documents, has been thrown out because the prosecutor involved uh, was the judge ruled was not a appointed appropriately and this has been cooking for a while and this is the classified look, documents one isn't it this is quite yeah, a exactly. serious one the day it was two probably, days probably after the this, strongest yeah, one against yeah. him and the judge didn't say that he didn't do anything illegal what the judge said is you've got this special prosecutor kind of guy you know taking the case and you rushed it through and the law is unclear and uh, uh it's and so it's all procedural but the point is the biggest threat against Trump is now gone until they figure out what they're going to do. And imagine how hard it would be for the Biden administration to go back and say, yes, we want to prosecute the guy who almost got shot again on a case that fairly or unfairly, a lot of Americans see as part of a bigger effort to simply get Trump regardless of the legal it, it is, uh, you know, legitimacy. It, it, is, it is really interesting. Um, there's one person I thought about over the weekend, and I completely agree with you, and we'll talk about in a bit more detail. What was the name of that man who stood for election as a district attorney in New York and literally said on his calling card, I'm going to bring down Donald Trump? Is it Melvin? What was his name? Uh, Alvin. Alvin Bragg. He's screwed, he's the, isn't he? Uh, yeah. he He's, he's, the, he's, he's seriously screwed, Alvin well, Bragg. Well, you can say that, but once again, the people who really don't like Trump, and this is still a divided country, and even yep. after the assassination attempt, and you know, people are feeling they're, they're willing to reconsider a little bit, you're still going to have a solid 40 45% of the country who just will never, ever like Trump. And those people, a lot of them live in Manhattan, and they elect <laughs> Alvin Bragg. So you're still going to have the two camps. What's interesting for political pros that we've been talking to at InsideSources.com are the people who say Trump has the opportunity to expand the map in November. If mm -hmm. Biden stays the nominee, which now looks more likely, uh, it's going to be harder to switch him out. First of all, this story just takes over the news cycle. It slows everything down. And they already had a time issue on the Democratic side to make a switch. So Biden, you know, isn't doing great. He's probably going to lose one or all three of Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania with with a weak nominee. Trump maybe wins Virginia, maybe wins New Hampshire, maybe wins New Mexico. And suddenly you have a guy who's won a map that looks very different from any map. So we have going all the way back. You got to go back to George H.W. Bush in 1988. Mm. And uh, so that could give Trump more momentum. It could silence some of his critics. And it could cause some, obviously, the New York Times and whatever are going to do what they're going to do. But it could cause some people to say, you know what? Let's give the guy a chance. Let's just, what do you want to do as president? Maybe we'll have a president instead of a big culture fight about I, my side hates your side. Let, Maybe let, we'll have let's, just plain old boring politics. How about that? I, I'm, I'm with you. And let's go back to how you started this about the lottery ticket. Um, mm -hmm. We've called him Teflon in the past. We've said everything. Right. I mean, he was shot. And to have, even at that moment, as you said, stood up and the blood and fight, fight, fight. But, but what's really, really interesting is that from that moment, the rhetoric from his side has changed. He was going to make, apparently, in his own words, a banging speech on Thursday. Right. Now it's going to be more conciliatory. Uh, I mean, honestly, Biden did that thing from the Oval Office and still made six mistakes. I watched that with my head <laughs> in my hands again. Um, I, I read this really interesting stat, MG, and I was saying it earlier. I don't know if you heard it, but... Um, Probably not, because you're probably painting the wall or something. <laughs> Apparently, the day after Ronald Reagan was... A, they attempted to assassinate him, right. his approval rating went up 22 points. We're hearing on this side of the Atlantic, I could be totally wrong, that 24 hours after the same thing happened to Donald Trump, he also went up 22 points. Is that a fact? Because if it is, he's a shoo-in, isn't he? He's a shoo-in. I, 
I haven't seen that number. And I'll also say that as bad as the debate was for Joe Biden, because we have this divided country where you only have about 10% that are willing to move at all. So I'm saying it's just, it's a lot harder. So I'll put it this way, a 5% real shift today would have the political impact of a 20 point shift in the days of Ronald Reagan yep. when there was a lot more party. People used to commonly, in fact, remember they had the name back in the day of Reagan Democrats. People were diehard Democrats. They voted Democrat for governor and local office, but they voted Ronald Reagan because they liked Ronald Reagan. You had a lot more, uh, you know, party. Uh, you, you guys obviously don't have this, but we, you know, you, you have bipartisan voting. You have people who vote one party for one thing and another party for another. And so, in this era where there's very little of that uh, around the ballot voting, it, it's possible, you know, to, to have a five point shift is a big deal. Does he, does uh, he in your mind, does he, MG, does he win in your mind? Does he win? So Saturday should remind us that there are all kinds of things that can happen and dramatically change your race. And I don't just mean assassinations or deaths or illnesses. Remember Joe Biden may just not be able to get through this race. He may just have to step down just out of you know physical issues and so what does that do if that happens you know president trump is expected to announce his vp tonight who do you we'll, reckon we'll that will be impact. by the way but who, I, who do you reckon that will be you know the the conventional wisdom right now based on the sources we're talking to is marco rubio is probably the narrow front runner but there's also a lot of talk that trump may reach outside the box so you know i i i have given up predicting donald trump or anything about donald trump i I can't figure it out. You might be but, the next vice president. But I, me, but I will say this. The, the, <laughs> we are at the point in the race where it will take something as big as Saturday yeah. for Trump not to win. You know what I mean? It'll take like a an economic something or, you know, China invades Taiwan. It, it, you, you're not going to beat him at this point. Biden is so weak and Trump is so strong. You're not going to beat him with political craft you know, as in a typical election, where if you do and the do right, you, ad, you the right think, speech, the right message, that's, those days are just gone. Do that's you, not happening do, do right you think, as a man who knows politics, here's my million dollar question. Sure. The language is different. He was going to make this big speech. Now it's conciliatory, as I said to you. It's about uniting America. Evil won't win. God's the reason I'm here. Do you think he can keep his mouth shut till November and take advantage? I know this sounds cynical about certain things that have happened or do you think because i thought the minute i saw it strangely i probably thought differently to other people i thought oh my god this is going to be the democrats are going to say this is your rhetoric but very quickly the republicans were saying well hold on a minute you've called this man a racist and a fascist sure. and misogynistic a homophobe you've had attack ads you've said this that it's all bad to be fair each side has been bad so yeah. so from this do you think that donald can spend the next three months calmly knowing that it's probably in the bag unless he messes it up or not. I, he's yeah, never no. shown three months' no. worth of discipline. No. But once again, his lead is so... I mean, think about what Americans saw. Americans think that Joe Biden couldn't survive a shaving cut and Donald Trump just took a bullet. Yeah. So, I mean, come on, that's you know, Bill Clinton had, had a great line that I think really reflects American pos politics. In the eyes of voters, it's better to be wrong and strong than weak and right. And Biden's problem is no one thinks he's right about you know inflation, foreign policy, et cetera, and he's weak. So Trump is just in a really strong place. Who can beat him? Donald Trump, well, two things. History, you know, something weird could happen, and that's a very small chance. And then Donald Trump could beat himself, and that would not be a shocker. But, man, so far, he has remained disciplined, and he doesn't have to be perfect. He just has to be okay because Biden is so fundamentally weak. And we're seeing numbers of uh, Joe Biden possibly losing 20% of the black male vote to Donald Trump. If that happens... That Biden's done. I mean, there's just he has no coalition he can build where he only gets 80% of the black male vote. Just the, the, the votes just aren't there. So. MG, it is an absolute pleasure. It always is. I know you've been busy and at it. We'll have you on loads. Thank you so much indeed, Mike Graham.